All right, what's going on, everyone? You're listening to Bull Central, and I am joined today by a very special guest. He's a content producer for NBC Sports Chicago. You've likely heard him on the Bulls Talk podcast as a contributor with Casey Johnson, Rob Schaefer, and Jason Goff. He's also a member of the Sports Adjacent podcast, which if you haven't checked out already, you definitely should. I'll leave a link to it in the description below, but it is my pleasure to bring back to the show Tony Gill of NBC Sports Chicago. Tony, it's good to have you back, my man. I appreciate you making the time. No problem, Jamal. Thanks for having me, man. It's fun to be back. Of course. Now, Tony, uh, it's been a long time. And, uh, you know, the last time I had you on, believe it or not, it was when we uh, it was the night of the NBA draft. Or I guess the day of the NBA draft. Um, and we were speculating a lot on who the Bulls might take at that 38th pick. And I know you were all about uh, I think it was Sharif Cooper. Right. And he was yep. actually available at that 38th pick. But the Bulls, mm-hmm. of course, opted for Io and uh, Sharif fell all the way to 48. I'm sure if you has probably changed since then, but I actually wanted to start there. How do you feel about Io this season, and what do you think his future potential is? Um, Io was a very good player. I always thought Io was a very, very good player. Um, my concern was the Bulls didn't really have a, uh, a backup playmaker, um, yeah. and they kind of still don't. <laughs> um, but Io has certainly done the best out of the options, right, uh, of, of being the point guard. Um, and, you know, spreading the ball around as much as it can be and running the offense. So I always done a very good job of fill, filling that role. Um, he certainly become a, uh, a pretty decent uh, defender. You, you know, his, his ceiling, he's probably going to be a pretty good defender as he gets more experience. Um, offensively, uh, he knows, you know, the spots where he needs to be. Um, he's always looking to make that pass. Um, he's not afraid to take the big shot. So, um, he's certainly been a very, very good player uh, for this Bulls team, and um, they just they should expect a lot from him. I mean, I, I'm I think he should be a starter. Um, I don't think his future is is bench player. Um, I think he is a NBA starter uh, once he gets his bearings around the league and gets more comfortable. But yeah, this this was obviously the better pick. Um, I, I'm still going to be a Sharif guy, uh, just always, but. Uh, but Ayo has certainly been the better player uh, so far, and I, he should be the better player going forward. Yeah, I mean, he's he's really been sort of the, the bright spots uh, in this season and um, really a big surprise for me. I actually thought he wasn't going to be getting a lot of playing time. Right. I mean, I mean, a lot of it has to do with injuries. Obviously, yeah. Lonzo Ball has been out for a bit, but, uh, you know, going into the season, I thought that he would just be out of the rotation just because of how heavy the backcourt was you know, Kobe White obviously was out at the beginning of the season. So that allowed for him some opportunities as well. But when you saw all of the guards in, in the backcourt, I was like, I don't even know if I was going to be able to get any playing time as a result. So um, it's definitely been a bright spot. And obviously it, you know, it, it paints the story even more. The fact that he's also from Chicago. Um, I do want to talk about the bulls and how they've been doing recently. Uh, they got to win the other night against the wizards. Uh, mm-hmm. For those watching, we're recording this on, Thursday morning, March 31st. Uh, it wasn't the prettiest of wins. And of course, right. the Bulls have really struggled really ever since the All-Star break. Um, I know you were very vocal on the Bulls Talk podcast the other day after that loss to the Knicks and saying that a lot of this is on Billy Donovan, which I actually completely agree with you. Mm-hmm. I think there is a lot to blame on the coaching staff for this recent slump. Um, curious to know, you know, what do you think the biggest issue is that the Bulls coaching staff really needs to solve for right now? And realistically, you know, how quickly do you think that they can fix it before heading into the postseason? Because we've got six games left on the schedule. We're almost there. Yeah. Um, the the biggest issue is defensively. Uh, but I think that's a long-term issue that I, 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 they won't be able to get right. They just kind of have to do the best they can with that. Uh, but I also think they could be better defensively by having a better a better offense. Sure. Um, and that's, that's the thing that I think that can be fixed more quickly um and it's something that i don't that i don't have faith that he can fix um and here's why uh if you look at billy down billy donovan's nba career um he is a player's coach he is a motivator guy my issue with the hiring and the odd aggressiveness that AK and Mark Eversley 
went about going after him once he became a head coach was just simply his his X's and O's. Um, you look at his offenses uh, at at OKC, and you 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 think about okay, why did Kevin Durant leave? Among other reasons, right? Um, uh, one of those reasons was basketball felt really hard to him. Um, where you have these two dynamic players in in Russell Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant, and the the entire offense was tough shots. And it's like, how is that? How is that a thing? He went to Golden State because they played a more excellent brand of basketball, a more team brand of basketball that made life a lot easier. Um, and you see the remnants of that here in Chicago, where you have Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan. Essentially, the entire offense is tough shots and making tough shots. Uh, and it you can tell that it's weighing on them on the defensive end. If you watch Zach and DeMar on the defensive end, it's, you know, they're not all there a hundred percent of the time. So if you make their lives easier on offense, um, where the, where the majority of, of the product is just them making tough shots and creating things. Um, I think you get a better effort from them defensively, but that's, that's on Billy. It's, it's, if the offense has regressed so much where, the league made one adjustment and that's double team DeMar DeRozan. And now your offense is broken. Something is wrong. Yeah. Um, and some, and in that case, something has always been wrong. You didn't prepare for that option. That team, once DeMar got hot, teams weren't going to double team. Like you, it, it seems like that thought didn't, didn't come about. Um, but they can do so uh, a couple quick things, get guys involved early, right? Don't, don't have DeMar and, and Zach attack so early. If they're going to take the majority of the shots in the second half and the fourth quarter, um, you need to get those other, particularly Booch involved early in the offensive game plan. Do you need to get those Kobe White, Alex Caruso, those guys, have them be threats earlier in the game so it makes it easier for them in the fourth quarter where it's not easy, it's not so easy to send that double or that triple team uh, to DeMar on, on that, uh, on that mid range block. So um, a lot of this is, it, it is on Billy and it's a, for me, it's a pattern from Billy in terms of how he coaches offense in the NBA level. Well, and this might be more of a controversial question. I think I probably already know the answer based on what you were just saying, but do you think that Billy Donovan is the right man for the job? Meaning given, you know, the Bulls have made all of these aggressive moves since hiring him, right. To really sort of, fast track that timeline and start winning now is Billy Donovan the guy to get you there to being a title contending team and a championship level coach because he had the opportunity right with Oklahoma City Kevin Durant Russell Westbrook they went to Western Conference Finals they were up 3-1 they blew that 3-1 lead mm -hmm. Kevin Durant leaves and ever since then I mean he kind of had sort of that middle tier team right you know they could go to the playoffs but they never really got over that hump I don't even think they made it past the first round every year that he went to the playoffs in Oklahoma city. Do you think that he is a championship level type coach? Um, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I think he has settled and made this, uh, this franchise relevant again. Um, but I think, and he's only been here for two years. So, you know, we'll see. Usually things start to, you know, wane and, you know, after a fourth year, Right. <laughs> uh, but from what I've seen so far and where the bulls are, where they have pressed the gas, um, I'll be, you know, unnecessarily in my opinion, but they, they press down on the gas on, on this roster and on this team. Um, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think if I if, gun to my head and you say yes or no, I'm going to say no. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I, I just haven't seen it just yet. Um, it seems like he's getting out coached, you know, almost every other night. Um, and it's, it's starting to feel like, uh, come on, man. Like un un unless they make a, an assistant coach hire that a Tom Thibodeau hire for doc rivers, right. Where you have an X and uh, an X and O aficionado guy mm -hmm. uh, along paired with Billy Donovan right. to kind of help him out with, with that. Um, but other than that, I just I just don't see it. Like, I just don't see him being here when the Bulls win a championship or when they have their best chance to win a championship.
Yeah. And, and you know, I, I remember when the Bulls hired Billy Donovan, um, to an extent, uh, you know, I, I kind of felt the same way in the sense that I was like, well, it's obviously it's better than Jim Boylan. I think any Bulls fan will agree with that. But at the same time, it was like, yeah, is this is this sort of that stepping stone, right? A guy that's a player's coach that can develop players and get the Bulls to the next level, which he's which he's done. Let's I mean, let's be fair on that point. But it's like, is he going to be able to get them to the level of title contention? That's where I kind of stand. I'm like, I honestly don't know if he would be that type of coach. But let me let me rephrase because I don't want to put it all on Billy. Mm-hmm. the most recent struggles because the players should be held accountable as well. Oh yeah. Billy yeah, himself. We, we definitely about that. Yeah. You know, he, he's not out there taking the shots. Uh-huh. He's not out there playing defense. I do think there is something to be said, you know, you can coach effort. Sure. But the players also have to want it to. And lately we just haven't really been seeing that energy. We've been just seeing them coming out kind of flat. That fight isn't there. Uh, and just that general level of urgency, right. From a team that now has six games left in the schedule and they're jockeying for playoff positioning. Um, that's what's the most concerning to me as a fan is the lack of effort and energy that we see at the beginning that we saw at the beginning of the season. Do you think some of it is that maybe they've lost a little bit of confidence or perhaps that pressure sort of mounted a bit because they exceeded expectations at the beginning of the season. And that's just kind of, you know, gotten to them mentally speaking. Um, well, I think injuries and inconsistent sure. you know, lineup is probably the biggest uh, issue um, for this team, and I don't want to discount that uh, among the you know the other issues that we talked about earlier. Um, so I think injury, injuries is a big one, uh, but also expectations, right? Like I'm not disappointed, and it's, they're right where I thought they'd be, you know, uh, from the beginning of the season, even once the, after they signed Demar. Um, and I also want to make sure that Bulls fans don't um, confuse themselves over what this roster actually is and how it's viewed, you know, nationally. Yeah. Um, their best player is DeMar DeRozan. <laughs> We've seen what that's like with prime DeMar DeRozan when he's your best player. Right. And it's not championship level. So to have that expectation now or going forward, I think isn't really reasonable considering, again, DeMar DeRozan is a really good basketball player. hmm a really good basketball player but it's still DeMar DeRozan right like I I don't I don't want to get that confused that you know Vooch was in Orlando they were a routine first round exit right like Zach Levine hasn't won anything yet so it those collection of players are your 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 big three Alonzo Ball hasn't won anything yet the only person that's won anything is is Alex Caruso he was a six man uh, (laughs) on the Lakers they are they're depending a lot from the effort from a rookie and Io DeSumo. Um, also, the future depends on a rookie, Patrick Williams, that we don't know anything about. So you, when you put all of those things into context yeah. and you put them together on a basketball team, now you have a more realistic picture of the ceiling and what this roster is. This season has been a lot of fun. Watching them uh, grow and become relevant again um, nationally has been great. But there was always going to be a cap specifically on this season. Um, and if things stay the same, it's going to be a cap on this roster. Let's yeah. just be realist. Now we don't have to talk about them unless you want to get there about, you know, the future of, of this team. But if we're talking about this season, there was always going to be a, a, a cap on this season. Yeah. They were definitely outplaying what they were. They were never going to be a one seed, never going to be a one seed. That's yeah. just it was ridiculous. Yeah, I, I mean, I talked about, uh, I had Matt Peck on the channel last week and I was talking to him about this. It's like, to an extent, you kind of need to uh, temper expectations a little bit. Prior to the season, I pegged this team to probably be a five seed and 46 wins. And look where we are, they're a five seed and they got 44 wins. And and I said that as more of a, not a, not a conservative estimate, like this would be good. Like this would be a really yeah. good result for this mm-hmm. team. And this was after we already knew that we got DeMar DeRozan, uh, Alonzo Ball and the like. And um, and yet somehow as Bulls fans were disappointed because they exceeded all these expectations at the beginning of the season. Right. So I, I think it is good to kind of put that into perspective. Like you're saying, it's like this team was never really a title contending team as much as they might have looked like it at the beginning of the season because DeMar DeRozan was playing out of his mind. You kind of always knew that there probably would be a point where they'd come back to earth a little bit. Um, 
yeah. you did talk yeah. about. I mean, I'll, I'll, yeah. I mean, you know, you you look at the, the the other teams, right? Like Milwaukee for the first like fifteen games, they were like out of the playoff picture. But right. it's it's a chess game during the regular season. Like the yeah. the real contenders know to slowly ramp up. You know, and don't put all the it, the 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 gas have been pressed the entire time for the Bulls. Right. Uh, so now we're seeing that you know return to the mean of where they probably were the entire time yeah hey you were talking about the future of this mm-hmm. team and i actually did want to talk about that uh i want to talk about zach levine for a bit uh because mm-hmm. we all know he's playing in a contract here he's set to become an unrestricted free agent mm-hmm. zach started out the season very well of course since um then you know getting injured and returning hasn't quite looked himself he himself has admitted he's not 100 percent. but at the same time i said in one of my videos early this week the injury aside and not being 100 percent, that's still uh, shouldn't affect your decision making on the court and playing smart basketball. And lately, I feel like we're seeing sort of the old Zach Levine of the Jim Boylan era, the player who gets sort of that tunnel vision, creates a lot of heavy ISO plays, uh, taking bad shots at ill-advised times. The other night against the Wizards, he probably had one of the worst games of his season. That yeah, I have to ask because it's one of the most heated topics among Bulls fans. Mm-hmm. Is Zach Levine worth a max contract to the tune of forty million dollars a year? Uh, that he's going to be eligible uh, for this summer. What are your thoughts? Oh, they got to pay him. Um, like, I mean, they've, they've, by making that boost trade, by going all in with DeMar DeRozan like they have and uh, the other signings, they've made their uh, their bed with Zach Levine. Uh, unless something, you know, crazy happens where another uh, disgruntled player that's better than Zach Levine, you know, Donovan Mitchell or, you know, somebody gets angry and wants, wants to leave. Um, I think they're stuck with with, with Zach. And, and I shouldn't say stuck as in it's a, it's a bad thing. Zach Levine is an all star player; is a really really good player. Right. Um. But I've been I've been for as many interviews that I've done or, or conversations that I've had about the Bulls. Uh, I think one thing that I've been saying consistently is enjoy the season. This team's going to feel a lot different when Zach has a max contract. Right. Uh. Because now it's you're you're locked in with a middle-aged DeMar DeRozan who had to play like Wilt Chamberlain for you to be in this position, uh, which is probably not going to happen again next year. Uh, right. An aging Vooch on a declining contract, uh, a fourth overall pick who you know nothing about heading into a contract extension eligible season, um, a backup Lou, lesser Lou Williams and Kobe White, uh, and Io Desumu, and you know, hopefully, it, uh, I mean, it's it's so many different things <laughs> that it's it, it's gonna look really weird going into the, to the next season. So I think they get they're gonna have to give him that contract. Um, he's not gonna get the super max. I don't think he's gonna make an All NBA team. Yeah. Um, I just think that uh, I mean the injuries really hampered him. I um, mean, other players have really you know stepped up. Uh, to make the top 15. I think DeMar will make third team. Uh, but Zach, I, I don't think he's going to get that super max. Uh, but he is going to get a, a max contract. And um, I'm just I'm just interested to see how they build a championship team. Because in order, you're going to have to find a player better than Zach Levine in order to win. Like, that's, that's just it. Like, you're going to have to find a player better than him for them to win a championship. And I don't know where that player is right now. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that Arturis and Mark are creative enough and aggressive enough to find that player now that they have kind of concrete themselves that this is their window now. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, right? Is, is like, uh, they need a player that, like you mentioned, they're still going to probably need a player that's better than Zach Levine. Mm-hmm. In a way, like you said, they're going to have to pay him the max. There's just sort of no way of getting around it. But do you think that he should be getting the max? Um, Because there's also that there's also that question of, well, Zach deserves it, right? Because he's been underpaid the last two, three years of his contract, which I, I agree. I don't buy that because it's like every player, some players really over, you know, Uh, perform outside of their contract or they underperform relative to their contract that's just the nature of the nba right you look at a guy like scotty pippen who signed this crazy contract in 1991 and then by the end of it he was 
way underpaid, right? But it's like you sign the contract that you got. So I don't really fault the players or the franchise for that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But now, based on what we know of Zach Levine, is he worth a max contract? Um, see, here's the thing with the biggest issue for me is his knees. Yeah. Uh, and people like to say, you know, hey, you know, he, you know, what, how old is Zach? What, like 26, 27? 27, yeah. Um, and like, oh, you know, he's still young. His knees got a little bit more years on them than his age would say. Right. So now the essentially once you give him that contract, everything rides on that dude's knees. And I don't want to PTSD fans, you know, with their clothes. <laughs> uh, but that's that's the facts. Everything rides on that dude's knees for this to be a, a successful venture. Um, and I think he's gonna be a, a solid player. Like he's gonna be an all-star again. Yeah. He's that good. So if you are a multiple all-star you deserve a, a max contract sure. if you're going to continue that level. I don't see a major drop-off um, from him. Uh, his game is kind of skewed as athletic as he's been in his career. Um, the skill level is also at a high level enough where he's not totally dependent on his athleticism to make plays and make shots. Um, so that that is a good thing that, you know, he's not the the slasher that, that he was early in his career, and he's kind of more formed his game to be in a shooter uh, in an outside presence. So, um, but yeah, he got his comps, you know, in terms of other players. Uh, yeah, he, he's, he's going to get a max contract. And it's, again, it's going to be weird <laughs> looking from the roster once he gets it, uh, because now that number is going to balloon uh to what he has uh what he's gonna get uh 25 you know in the in the <laughs> mid 20s high 20 per year contract and uh if things don't work out you're just gonna have a a, a high salary second round exit team right so there's gonna be a lot of things to think about um in terms of what happens after that contract but I think they send a bad message for as much capital that they've gotten around the league in terms of respect uh, for this organization. A little bit of that goes away if they don't pay Zach Levine, in my opinion. Sure. Yeah. And then, and I think, I mean, you make a good point and I don't want to, you know, discount the fact that Zach Levine is still an incredible player. He, like you said, he's still an all-star. Um, yeah. I get sometimes from people in the comments on my videos, like, well, you're a Zach Levine hater. It's like, no, I'm not a Zach Levine hater. I, I have high expectations of the guy, first of all. And second, I still think he's an incredible player. It's just a matter of, is he a superstar level player? Right. And you know that people, you know, there's players currently in the league and in the past that have gotten max contracts that were not superstar level players. So I totally get that. Right. But that's sort of my thing is it's like, is Zach Levine that number one option on a championship contending team? And I just, I, I, I can't say with confidence that he is, but anyway, so I don't want to discount that because he's obviously still an incredible player and an all-star level player, and he should be getting paid and getting paid handsomely for it. Um, you talked about, you know, his knees and injuries. Let's talk about Lonzo ball uh, a little bit. Um, because I hear a lot of fans saying, well, if only we had Lonzo, we wouldn't be struggling. And, you know, this team would be so much better if we had our pass first point guard in the lineup, which to that I reply, you know, Lonzo alone isn't fixing all of these issues that this team is currently having. You know, even without Lonzo, this team should still be really good when you look at the level of talent between DeMar, Zach and Vucevic. But sure, it probably would be a little bit better because, you know, Lonzo, he provides you that added defense on the perimeter. He's a very good, smart player. Uh, he can help spread the floor on offense uh, because he's, you know, good at three-point shooting. Um, I, I think the, the what there's a lot of good qualities about Lonzo Ball that the Bulls are missing right now. But here's my thing. Uh, you know, Lonzo and the perspective I have on him in his five years in the NBA, he's never been able to be healthy for the full season. In fact, mm -hmm. the most games he's ever played in NBA season – um, it was in 2019 when he played uh, 63 games. Mm -hmm. The surgery he recently had to repair the torn meniscus. That's the second time that he's had that exact same procedure on the same knee. The first was back when he was um, in between his rookie and sophomore seasons. And my biggest concern is, can the guy stay healthy? Because despite the fact that he fits a big knee for the Bulls, um, if he's not available, it doesn't really matter, right? Do you think there's a legitimate concern to Lonzo's long-term health? Again, only 24 years old. Uh, yeah, 
yeah um and especially with the window that the bulls are in now i mean if the demar derozan tray really kind of puts them you know in a in a in a weird spot um if they just make the boots trade right i mean he's got a declining contract um you know it's expiring after mm-hmm. after you know next season so that was easily you can easily move on from that um and if everything else happens, right, you'll feel a little bit better where, you know, Lonzo, you know, he's 24, yeah, he's injured, but, you know, by the time this team is actually ready to do something, he should be ready to go. Uh, but now with the uh, DeMar uh, signing, now it puts you in a position where you need him now. Now you mm-hmm. need him. Uh, and you're right. Um, I was, that's funny. I was looking at, you know, his basketball reference page and um, he hasn't played over 70 games in his basketball life <laughs> on the NBA level. Uh, and it's and it's great to have him, right? When he was playing, he was excellent defensively, um, 40% from three, like all the things that you need, proper, you know, space guy, you know, for uh, yeah. Zach and, and DeMar, um, pushed the ball, got the ball where it needed to be. Um, but if he's not available, to you on a, on a regular basis it's it's like what do you you're paying for rehab you yeah. know for, for this guy every year uh, and that should be a concern uh for bulls fans that he's not going to be available to you uh for long stretches of of the season and um having your margin for error being so small for this team um health is a big issue for some reason for the bulls like it i don't know what it is i don't know what it is about it i don't know what goes into scouting i don't know with their training facility like i have no idea but it's always been an issue uh and it's still affecting them even to this day after a regime change so um it it is a major concern uh luckily he has youth on his side right luckily but it's still, if somebody hasn't done anything, it's hard to hope that they can do it. Um, especially with a decent enough sample size, you know, a five, six year NBA career uh, like Lonzo has. Um, but yeah, it's it's hard to convince somebody, oh, I can do that or I can be that or project something when you haven't seen it anywhere. Yeah. You have uh, more of an inside track on the Bulls uh, than us fans probably do. Do you think it's possible we may not see Lonzo return this season, given how his recovery is trending? With six games left, or five games left, depending on when you're listening to this, um, if I'm the Bulls, you're not winning the championship. You made your point in making the playoffs already. You're in. I don't. I don't think they're going to be in the play-in. Um, too many things will have to go wrong. Uh, for them to slip to the play in. So I think they'll avoid that, which is a goal. Um, I don't I don't think there's a reason to bring Lonzo back, especially with his rehab not going according to plan um, in terms of how his body's reacting to the rehab. Um, it, it, he hasn't had a has a setback, but he hasn't made a step forward. Either. Right. So um, if that's the case, it's better to make sure that he's available for the long term uh, and next year than for a potential, depending on one matchup, right? If they, if they play Cleveland, that's probably their best chance of making it to the next round, but literally anybody else is just not, I don't see it being more than five games. Um, Again, depending on the matchup, maybe six, maybe, uh, but it, there's no reason to have him rush back um, for a first round exit. You you talked about, you know, five games, um, which I think is, uh, I mean, realistically speaking, right, especially those top four teams. Um, I wanted to ask because I think Rob asked this question on the Bulls Talk podcast, but I believe he only got a response from Cody Westerlin, um, who was on the prod that day. Uh, I think because I listen to so many podcasts, so I could be wrong. Maybe you did get... Uh, a response to that, but it was about the Bulls first round series matchup. Um, which of course, of course, the Bulls are currently fifth half game ahead of the Raptors and one and a half games ahead of the Cavs. Um, is there an ideal matchup between those top four teams in the East 
because the Bulls are likely going to face one of those teams where they finish fifth or sixth. Which of those four teams between the Heat, Celtics, Sixers, Bucks, do you think the Bulls would have the best chance against in a seven-game series? Not necessarily winning the series, because I think that's probably a taller order, but at least try to make it a competitive series. <sighs> um... It's a tough one, huh? <laughs> Even I myself, I'm just like, I don't know. Right? It's like the Heat are kind of struggling, but still the Heat are a great team. The Celtics are playing out of their minds right now. Obviously, yeah. Sixers and Bucks, that's never going to be a good matchup. Yeah. Um... Man, they're all so bad. <laughs> all right. Uh, if I had to make one choice right now, I'd probably say Miami. Yeah. Um, and the second will be Boston, only because they've only showed this in the second half of the season. Right. Um. Again, I don't want to play them right now. Uh, they're you know they're dubbing everybody like anybody they play top three team whatever it doesn't matter they're dubbing them. Um, but I I probably leave Miami, just because uh in terms of talent and you know top in talent uh they aren't as top heavy as the rest of those teams in terms of an individual player that can just dominate obviously like from the tip um obviously they have the better coach uh they have the better roster um but if i had to the their best chance to win more than one game in a series, I, I probably would say Miami. Okay. Yeah. For me, I mean, I, I'd probably, I mean, it's between Miami and, and, and Boston. Uh, the reason I'd probably go with the Celtics is um, really because of coaching, right? Emi Odoka, first time coach. Um, it's going to be a new experience for him being in an NBA playoff type setting. Uh, Tatum and J, you know, Tatum and Brown, obviously great players, but also still young to an extent, a bit inexperienced and, the Bulls might have that advantage as well. Um, Miami, I just feel like Spo is going to outcoach Billy Donovan. I mean, we've seen it in the regular season, right? It's like every time that they play the Heat, he just knows how to make the proper adjustments to go against the Bulls. Um, that's where I struggle with with that one. But Sixers and Bucks, I mean, I feel like it's going to be hard to stop Giannis and uh, Embiid. Mm-hmm. Um I'll end it with this one, Tony. Uh, Bulls have the Clippers tonight. They're back at home. Bulls have been a much better team at home this season than on the road. Mm -hmm. Paul George is back in the lineup, though, for the Clippers, which will make it a bit more of a challenge for the Bulls. Who do you have tonight? How important is this game to the Bulls, even just to build some momentum going into these final six games of the season? You know, if you ask uh, Cody Westerland, there's no such thing as a must-win game. I, I, I was going to say, I listened to that podcast. Yeah. It's like, I hate it when people say it's a must-win. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, at this point, the Bulls need to win as many games as possible just for separation purposes and chances yeah. to avoid Milwaukee in the first round purposes. Um, but also just so they can build confidence within – you know, that organization, that team, that they aren't, yeah. you know, sliding. So all these, the rest of these games are important. Like I know for, you know, actual championship teams, like, you know, they're pretty settled in. They, you know, are pretty confident in what they can do uh, in a playoff. So seeding really doesn't matter much. Um, they just want to be playing at a, at a decent pace uh, heading into the playoffs. But uh, for teams that are struggling towards the end here, uh, all these final games are important um especially with you know they don't i don't even think necessarily that they have a proper playoff rotation just yet right (laughs) um for this team so they need all the opportunities they can get to kind of settle things down with this roster um so it is important um i think they win i think they win this game um i think they right now they're a better team than the clippers um, even though Paul George may be the best player out of, out of both sides. Uh, and, you know, he had an excellent game against Utah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's return. So he might, he, he's feeling a little bit swaggy right now. So, um, but I, I think the Bulls should win. They are definitely a better team at home than they are on the road. Um, so, yeah, I think the Bulls pull this one out. Um, again, it's, it's, 
there are no more pretty wins for the Bulls. Like everything is going to be ugly. Every win that they get is going to be really ugly. Uh, but you know, as long as they get the win uh, for this season, that's all that matters. Yeah, I, I I'm not going to call it a, a must win for Cody's sake, um, but it's important because the next three games are going to be even more of a challenge, right? You got the Heat, yeah. Bucks, and Celtics. It's like need to win this game at home, even if Paul George is back. But um, anyway, Tony, uh, I really do appreciate you taking the time, man. Uh, it means a lot to me. I uh, know my my viewers appreciate it as well. Um, guys, give Tony a follow at the Tony Gill uh, on Twitter. Uh, I'll leave a link to his uh, podcast, The Sports Adjacent, below. Make sure you follow the Bulls Talk podcast as well. Um, Tony, we'd love to have you back sometime in the offseason, man, and uh, enjoy the rest of the season. All right, man. Thanks a lot for having me. For sure. Take care, buddy.